Hello, my name is John Gibbons and in this presentation I'm going to talk to you about a particular uh, and fascinating case study in relation to the neurological system. So I'll just briefly introduce myself. So I am an author, osteopath and a lecturer. Uh, I'm trying to write my next book here on the vital spinal column and hopefully it'll be uh, available in 2023. So anyway, back to the, the case study. So many years ago, when I was at Oxford University, when I run a clinic there, a 24-year-old male who likes martial arts has a weakness when he tries to kick with his left leg. He also has some discomfort to the lower area of his thoracic spine. So it's hard to say, like I've got something here to say, what are your initial thoughts? But it's not really that much information, yeah, but I've listed here. So when he comes in, he says to me, John, when I lift my left leg, it feels like I almost have to tell it to lift. It's almost like slow time. Whereas with his right leg, you can simply like hip flex and knee extend, and he's very quick yeah, in lifting that leg and actually kicking with that leg. But um, with his left leg, he seems to, it's almost like delayed. You almost have to say like, come on leg, I want you to lift up and, uh, and extend. So that is almost how he presents to me. He had seen a therapist um, for many sessions where they did some manipulative techniques to his uh, lumbar, pelvis, thoracic spine, but he'd had over like 25 sessions and um, the symptoms hadn't really changed yeah, for that. Now, because I'm an osteopath, and I've written a book on the vital nerves. I always teach my students that, um, you know, if you potentially suspect a neurological condition, then it's important that at somewhere within that assessment process, you would run through the reflex testing and perhaps myotomes and dermatomes, yeah, and maybe some other specialized tests as we go through. When I was um, studying, um, I did see a similar sort of patient where, and if it hadn't been for the use of a patella hammer, like the reflex hammer, then um, I wouldn't have come up with a hypothesis of the condition that particular person had. Uh, but I'll discuss that in another case study. So when I actually ran through the reflexes, so if you understand where the reflexes are located, so I did the C5 reflex and the C6 and the C7 of his upper limb and we would classify them as normal. And when we say normal, we normally say it's a two, yeah, with two pluses here, so two plus plus. So the left C5, 6, 7 were normal and so were the right C5, 6, 7 were normal. Now when I tested his lower limb, in particular the L4 L5, even though people don't really believe there's an L5, but you can use the hamstring as one. But let's say the L4 and the S1. So when I tested these ones, um, it was surprising how increased these re reflexes were. To the point that we would say if they were increased, so we have one, something called like a, like a hyperreflexia, then we would normally classify them as three pluses. So when I tested the left side, they were very increased, and I tested the right side, they were also increased. So um, just remember, the upper limb were normal, and the lower limb were increased. But more importantly, there is a test that you can use. You might be familiar with this test, you might not be. So we, we call it the Babinski reflex. And when I did this test on the foot, I'll show you some pictures in a second and a, and a short video. When um, I performed this test on this 24-year-old male, it was a positive reaction. So let's look, look at that to start with. So the neurologist, Joseph Babinski, named this test. And it is a specific neurological test that can detect pathology within the central nervous system. So when you say the central nervous system, so you're basically looking at the brain and the spinal cord. Okay, so that will be more of a central nervous system. Um, and naturally the nerves that exit will be part of what we call the, the peripheral nervous system. So 
when you're looking at this test in particular, so for instance, if you're looking at, say, the plantar surface of the foot, and typically you can use like a like an inch, I normally use like a, the back of a, of a pen, so not the sharp end, or like a, like this is like a neurological um, patella hammer here, but be careful on one end because it's sometimes too sharp in here. Okay, so I tend to go from, say, the medial side of the foot to the lateral side and, and, and swoop like a, like, a, like a C shape. So go from inside to the outside to the inside. And you can see here, it says Babinski normal, where the toe is like the great toe and the smaller toes are curling down. However, on this gentleman, when I did this particular test on both feet, the toes went up and out. So let me show you a video. So on a baby between the age of 12 and 24, it would become positive. Okay, as in the, you have dorsiflexion here or extension here, um, and also the, the toes here. So basically, you go up and out. It says plantar flexion here, but it basically will go upwards and outwards. So the toes spread out. So typically, on a baby between 12 and 24 months, because the corticospinal tracts um, haven't developed, then it means it's a positive result. One of them play this one again. So let's play that again. Okay, you can see that the toes are like going upwards and outwards on here. So when I did that to that gentleman in question, then the toes went out. So what that told me was I suspected there was some form of pathology between the level of C7, Y, and the level of L4. And it had to be located within the spinal cord. So the question is, so like, why would that be? So let me just jump ahead to this picture. So I thought the problem was coming between C7 and L4. So I have to say exactly where. I'll discuss that in a sec. But um, because his reflexes at 5, 6, 7 were normal, and his reflexes at L4 and S1 were hyperreflexia, so naturally when the information comes in, there must have been a problem within the spinal cord located here. I know the spinal cord ends around L1. Okay, then it becomes the corda equina. Um, so it has to be in, in your, let's say all his reflexes were brisk, okay, as in like hyperreflexia, then potentially the problems within the brain, yeah, rather than between the spinal cord of C7 and the lower level of the reflexes in your. So I suspected it was going to be within this sort of area. And it's mainly to do with the reflexes. Okay, so what do you think? Naturally, I teach this and I let my students ponder on it for a few seconds. You know, if there's two or three of them, then they would um, chat about it. But if you're not really seeing this before, you know, it's, it's, it's quite a tricky one in some ways. Um, he also had a pain to his lower thoracic around T9, T10, T11. So it wasn't particularly painful. He just identified some sort of like issue within that area and maybe that's why the therapist he saw manipulated but it made no real difference so anyway i referred him to the doctor and i said i believe my patient has some issue within the spinal cord and i suspect it's more likely mid to lower thoracic spine um, i tested the reflexes so the c567 reflex was normal and the L4-S1 was hyperreflexia. So I said to the doctor, I think they should have a scan, uh, like an MR scan, yeah, to the spinal cord to see what's going on. Anyway, a few weeks later, he comes back, and he basically has a spinal cord tumour, like a neurofibroma, they would call it, uh, B9, yeah, between a level, I think it was around T9, T10, yeah, around here. This is a, like an MR scan of a spinal cord tumor, just in here. So naturally, he was recommended to have the tumor removed, which he did. And then he came back to see me, um, maybe a month or two later, and uh, the power to his left leg had uh, normalized, yeah? And also any symptoms he had around that lower thoracic spine um, subsided. Okay, so, uh, so basically, if I hadn't, I'd used the reflex patella hammer, then more than likely I probably would have just treated him with soft tissue techniques um, 
maybe some manipulation, but the patient would not have got any better, and more than likely he would have just gone to see someone else or someone else, and eventually, yeah, um, he would have had uh, an MR scan uh, that would have detected it, but it might have been, you know, a different situation if he'd left it for a few more months. So just a little clarification here, okay? So he basically had what we call like an upper motor neuron lesion. So this is within the central nervous system. So i.e. the brain or the spinal cord. So if you've got, say, like motor neuron uh, disorder or you've got um, uh, MS, like multiple sclerosis, yeah, then that's naturally within the central nervous system. So if you've got any of these signs or symptoms in here, um, then it would be potentially positive. I saw a lady who had MS many years ago, and um, all her as in all her reflexes were increased. She had something called a clonus. Um, so when I would say passively stretch the ankle foot, and if I did it slightly too uh, quickly, it almost respond by um, contracting. And you'd almost have this like repetition motion of the foot. Um, so sometimes you would see that it, um, you know, three or four, well, it would just keep going for a few times. Um, and that's what they call a clonus, uh, where the spindles, the muscle spindles, are not really sure what's going on and they just react by contracting. You can get something called like spasticity and rigidity. Uh, and naturally, the Babinski, which I've mentioned, um, is positive. Okay, so, um, so that was a case study. Um, but I saw um, and it related to a spinal tumor and if you have any um, questions or etc I'm sure you can contact me yeah via the website etc so thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed the presentation